long trip up here to Santa Fe to affirm that we want to see stronger laws to protect animals in New Mexico and help our lawmakers understand that the vast majority of New Mexicans care about these issues. Thank you so much. We're going to keep things rolling pretty quickly here today. Uh, we have a great lineup of speakers. And my name is Lisa Jennings. I'm the Executive Director of Animal Protection Voters. And I'd like to introduce our Program Director, Laura Bonner, who's going to be your MC today. Laura. Thanks so much. And, uh, what an awesome turnout, and it's so great to see so many uh, friends, old and new, here today. Um, we have our first speaker this afternoon is someone who's been a champion for New Mexicans, um, and especially for our vulnerable populations like animals for a long time. Um, please give a warm welcome to our State Land Commissioner, Ray Powell. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm going to keep my remarks short, but I want to thank each and every one of you for what you do every day on behalf of animals and speaking to those that don't, can't speak for themselves. As a veterinarian, uh, you know, I've never been bitten by any of my patients, and uh, fortunately I grew up in a family that had great respect for animals. We have been in agriculture as far back as we can face it. Uh, trace our family tree, but we understood that uh, these were sentient, very bright, uh, very important uh, animals, and animals that were important to our family's success. So treating them with respect and with courtesy and with love, uh, you know, is a reciprocal. What, when I see my uh, patients on my exam table, they're usually frightened, they're hurt, they're in a lot of pain. By taking a little bit of time and introducing myself, I found that they'll let you do just about anything if they think it's on their behalf. I forget that when I deal with other primates. <laughs> so, I've been bitten lots of times by other people, and oftentimes I've just I've deserved it. So again, you know that lesson uh, from the animals that I've learned is again, be respectful, use that golden. Reach out to people in a constructive and positive way on behalf of the animals. Uh, I think is the most important lesson that I've learned. I had the chance to work with Jane Goodall, and uh, she's got programs in 140 countries around the globe. And she has a, a, a quote that says, Knowledge engenders compassion, and compassion inspires action. And you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't have that compassion, and if you don't act on that, then it's meaningless. So I want to thank you. I want to thank Lisa Jennings. Where's Lisa? Um, right over here. Who has fought for years and years and years. And many of us that show up at the hearings uh, and, and let our voices be heard. And that's important. But Lisa is here almost 24 hours a day. And she's here at 2 o'clock in the morning when things are happening, and she makes sure that, that the animals' voices are heard. So thank you for what you're doing every day, and thank you for having that compassion, but most importantly, for taking the action on behalf of all the critters, primates, those guys that have four legs, those guys that have wings, and those guys that slither. Thanks very much for what you're doing. issue about protecting animals um, historically within our state. Um, David Peterson is general counsel for Attorney General Gary King, but 
uh, he's also a former legislator and actually was chair of House Judiciary Committee and was a legislator who sponsored um, the changes to make extreme animal cruelty a fourth degree felony in 1999, um, which was a big step forward for our state. So um, please welcome Dave Peterson. Speaking, uh, those of you that have known me for a long time are all chuckling about that. Uh, I appreciate the introduction. I really appreciate our, our old friend, good friend Ray Powell. Uh, Ray has uh, been not just professionally committed to these issues, but uh, personally committed, and he's a wonderful ally in, in these things, regardless of what office he serves serves in. Um, I, I'm here sort of as a substitute, and probably a very poor substitute for our Attorney General Gary King, who. Uh, really wanted to be here, unfortunately, is out of state on, on official business. Um, I kind of got uh, roped into, I'll use that term, uh, into the animal uh, uh, welfare issues uh, by Gary uh, King when he and I served in the legislature together, and, and by Lisa Jennings. And I remember the first issue that, that we uh, dealt with, and it was the famous horse tripping bill. Now, I'm from Gallup, okay? I, I, Born and raised in New Mexico, I know a lot about rodeo and things like that, and I had never heard of horse tripping. And so Lisa had a, a videotape. This goes, this dates me because it was a VCR tape. I don't think it was beta, but it was VCR. <laughs> and and they, Gary had it, and they showed it, and I looked at it in the office, and I, and I turned to both of them and I said, "Who in the world thinks this is a sport?" Um, and so, anyway, I, but somebody did. But that was sort of my introduction into that. And then uh, when uh, Attorney Gen then Representative and now my boss, Attorney General King, left the legislature, I sort of took on uh, several of these issues. And I uh, was very uh, fortunate, very proud uh, to, along with Senator Mary Jane Garcia, uh, we carried the, uh, the first uh, legislative bill successfully that made any form of animal cruelty into a felony back in 1999. And uh, kind of coming full circle 14 years later, uh, I'm helping out uh, Senator Richard Martinez, who's the sponsor of Senate Bill 83, to update and improve uh, our animal cruelty laws in, in New Mexico. Um, and so our office, uh, uh, Gary King has had a long history of supporting these issues. Uh, we have an animal uh, welfare task force through the Attorney General's office. I, I sort of uh, ramrod that. Uh, and uh, uh, we are also, I remember the other speakers, very pleased to see uh, the level of turnout and the continuing level of interest uh, in, uh, in these issues. As a prosecutor, and as a, as a former line prosecutor, I unfortunately am very well aware of the linkage that's demonstrated in scientific literature between animal abuse and human abuse. Uh, and that's one of the ways that we have tried to impress upon members of the legislature and the public and the news media why this is a very, very important issue and why it remains such an important issue uh, for everyone involved in law enforcement uh, as, as our office is. So um, I, I would just echo what other people have said. Maintain your interest. Talk to your legislators, uh, not only here, but back home, uh, and do everything that you can to support these issues, because in this legislative process, uh, the voices that are heard, clear voices, strong voices, not just necessarily loud voices, uh, but people who can articulate why we should do certain things are very, very influential. And your legislators really appreciate uh, you taking the effort. I, I served, I'm from Gallup, so I served in what I call the hinterlands. And so when people come a long distance, uh, it's very, uh, very important uh, uh, to your individual legislators to understand that, to see you, and to see people from home. So uh, Lisa and everyone else, uh, thank you very much. And uh, uh, we will maintain our commitment and our efforts. So hopefully we'll be successful. Thank you very much.
next speaker uh, has uh, just a wealth of personal and professional experience in working between um, the links between the way that we treat animals and the way that we treat um, other vulnerable populations, children and women, and uh, has been a huge champion for this issue in our state for her entire career. So please help me welcome uh, Tamara Ward. treats its animals. We know that 80% of the people that do have animals in their family treat them like a member of their family. Uh, just by a quick raise of hands, how many of you have some sort of a pet, whether it's a bird, a fish, a cat, a dog? Okay, keep your hand up if you have a picture of your bird, cat, fish, dog, horse on your cell phone. <laughs> how many of you have your animals celebrate holidays with you? How many of you celebrate their birthdays? How many of them, no matter what your holiday is, they have a Christmas stocking or a birthday present, they get their own presents, things like that? Thank you. Wonderful to see that. I'm glad I'm not alone. We know that 80% of the people that do have pets in their family consider them to be part of their family. And that's a wonderful thing. On the other side of that, unfortunately, that also has animals to be subject to violence, just as people are subject to violence when they're part of a family. We know that 50 to 75 percent of the women that are in domestic violence shelters report that their family pet was used as a tool and was either threatened, abused, or killed by the person that had abused threatened them. We know that abusers that are convicted of abuse are five times more, of animal abuse, are five times more likely to be convicted of, of abuse towards another person. They're four times more likely to be convicted of some sort of a drug crime and are three times more likely to be convicted of some sort of, sort of a property crime. So we know that animal abuse is not just something that takes care of your interaction with an animal, but it goes on to the way that we treat other beings, how we treat other beings in our society. I like to refer to that rather than animals and human beings, that we're all beings. And that the more kind our society is, and the more that we treat each other as beings, the more gentle our society is. I challenge you in your daily life that when you hear things that may not be the most appropriate, and open your ears and listen, you'll be surprised just in the day-to-day -day conversations, things that people say that are accepted in our society. Let's see if you know those. You can't beat a there's more than one way to, I've got a dog in this, in this fight. Amazingly, there's a very good lawyer that has a commercial on TV right now that said, I'm, I'm a fighting lawyer and I'm going to do great. And frighteningly, the end of his commercial shows a fighting dog. And he says, I'm a fighting lawyer, fighting for New Mexico. So my challenge to you is to think as a human being, to how we relate to each other, and with that, how we relate to our animals. Because as I said, the measure of a society is in the way that it treats its animals. Thank you. I'm so excited to introduce our next guest. Um, Representative Bobby Gonzalez is from Taos. Some of you guys said uh, he's your uh, representative. And um, Representative Gonzalez has done something uh, really active with so much uh, conviction and courage this session to introduce House Bill 579 to get rid of these archaic. <laughs>
Good afternoon. I, I want to thank you, and uh, that trap scared me. So. <laughs> uh, just, uh, you know, uh, I'll probably try to speak from the heart better than I have some notes here, but uh, uh, where we are today, uh, we just have to do things different. And uh, we, uh, if I can just leave you uh, with a message uh, that's most important to me is that uh, uh, New Mexico does not endorse cruelty to animals. Uh, it's interesting because uh, as this is going and uh, this is in reference to uh, House Bill 579, is uh, I have uh, received a lot of emails and uh, I want to tell you that I would think that if someone is sending an email, they would send it to me for sure, being that I'm the sponsor of the legislation. And uh, so far, you know, I would say that uh, the emails that I have received supporting uh, House Bill 79 has been more like a four to one. You know, there, there are some... Uh, There, there are some uh, opponents that are going to be strong out there, and then this morning uh, I was given uh, probably about four or five different FIRs from the different departments. And uh, if you have or if you're planning to attend uh, the first session, it will be on a Wednesday. And, uh, you know, please familiarize yourself with the uh, FIRs because uh, as I'm going down through them, you know, I'm finding some things that are not correct, that are not factual. And uh, this is what is important, you know, is make sure that, uh, you know, uh, on the stating of what we're doing is that, you know, it has support, you know, with the right uh, information. And, uh, and on this FIRs, I will give you a real brief of, you know, uh, you know, where we're going with this. Now, uh, one of the parts that I have done is uh, hopefully uh, that there will be enough room and we have moved the hearing. This is on Wednesday morning at 8 and it's going to be in um, the House Appropriations, which I think it's uh, 307. It's uh, room 307. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a large room. This will accommodate quite a bit, but even at that it could get full. You know, so maybe you might want to be there a little bit early to make sure if you're going to plan to attend to, to have a seat. And uh, again, uh, I missed uh, part of the first uh, presentations. We're voting on the floor and I'm going to have to go back real soon. But uh, New Mexico is way overdue. And uh, I guess uh, just recalling uh, just a few years back, you remember when we were fighting the issue of the cockfighting. And uh, that took quite a few years. You know, it took a, a but, you know, we worked and we worked on it and we worked on it and uh, we didn't give up on that. And finally, to where New Mexico, you know, banned, you know, the process of cockfighting as an activity in New Mexico. Now, uh, you'll mostly hardly ever hear anything unless there's an infraction of someone that has been caught violating the law. But, you know, it works. And uh, we had uh, many, many reasons at that time that economic development, that it was being done for this. and. Uh, uh, you know, all kinds of things, but the, the matter of it is, uh, it was still a very cruel, very cruel activity. And in my mind, you know, what I'm seeing is the part of trapping, in my opinion, is even worse than cockfighting. And the reason for it is because, you know, as uh, that activity was done, you know, at, they would dispose of the animals, you know, almost immediately. With this, you can have uh, an animal trapped, you know, for days, you know, or, you know, but it doesn't matter, you know, uh, uh, one minute or one, one hour or two days, it's too much, you know, that's a, a lot of endurance, a lot of very much pain. So, I'll just close with this, is, uh, you know, I'm glad that you're here, and, uh, you know, uh, just work with our opposition, and uh, the, the best way that you can do is just, uh, like I mentioned, is just uh, familiarize yourself very well with all the information that's out there. But just keeping in mind that 
uh, we can't continue this kind of practice in, in New Mexico. You know, this is something that was done way back, and there's the argument of a, a lot of things out there. But, you know, with technology today and with uh, what we can do is I'm sure that we can devise new ways, you know, that doesn't bring in that cruelty part. And with that, uh, I hope I can see you on Wednesday, and thank you. So if any of you from the west side of Albuquerque, I'm most likely your senator. Uh, I, I don't have much of a speech prepared today. I just want to say thank you, not only for the work that you do in speaking for those beings that cannot tell us in human words when they're in pain, when they hunger, when they feel sadness, when they feel hurt, and we all know they feel those things because we see it in their eyes, but it is you who give a human voice to that suffering and to those needs uh, that really deserve our thanks today. Um, so I'll thank you on behalf of myself. I also thank you on behalf of my three-year-old uh, Chihuahua Terrier mix, Husser. Uh, <laughs> I adopted Husser from Lucky Paws after the last 60 Days session. Um, you know, I, uh, I walked in and he was underweight and been pretty beaten up and abused. And I thought, well, you and I are in the same place in life. I just went for a 60 Day session. But really, what, what he had gone through before that was, was a lot worse than what I had been put through uh, up here in the Roundhouse. And uh, it's, it's because of him and because of our shared compassion uh, that I was proud to vote for Senator Martinez's bill, expanding the definitions of animal cruelty once, and I hope I can vote for it again on the floor. You know, I was also proud to introduce the baby bill, to Senator Martinez's bill, that simply expanded the penalties for starvation and for denying water to animals in New Mexico. So, you know, I have to get down to the floor, but I'll leave you with one thought. I was driving up here in the snow today, and I, I, I was reminded about what the full name of this city is. And that's La Vía Real de la Santa Fe de San Francisco de Assisi, St. Francis of Assisi. And anybody who's gone through Catholic grade school knows that St. Francis is the patron saint of animals. So let's do St. Francis proud and let's pass these bills this session.
stretches the representative of the current state of affairs for horses in the state of New Mexico. We have a long way to go for it. This is not acceptable. We can do better than this. It's going to take a lot of people, a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money. I'm not going to kid you. This horse was destined for slaughter in Mexico. We pulled him out of the kill pen at one of the local sale barns. In addition to being skinned across the top of his back from, from the bottom of his vein to his hip, unbeknownst to us, he had 17 fractures in his vertebrae. It took three months of intense uh, therapy and rehab at the vet's office before he could even come to the rescue. This horse is an off the track thoroughbred, which is another issue. So here in a nutshell is what happens to horses in this state. We use them, we get rid of them, we beat them, we abuse them, and then we send them to hell. And we can do better. So I ask your support for the bills, House Bill, well, Senate Bill 83 and 274, to help stop this kind of thing from happening. There were so many places in Stretch's uh, downfall that he should have been caught. I mean, he never should have been able to get to this point. And then to end up in a kill pen at a sail bar? Where, what happened? Where were people? Nobody called? Somebody did this to him. And nobody else took action. So it's, um, it's incumbent on all of us to, to step up and let your voice be heard for all the animals that can't do it. And thank you. Thank you everybody for your patience. We have two very special guests that we're going to end with today. Um, I'd like you to welcome uh, someone who came all the way from Taos today, who came to talk about the personal story that she has with tracks in New Mexico. Um, please give a warm welcome to Aretha Goodman. Yes, hi. Um, I got trapped in a leg hole trap uh, two years ago. Um, I was walking close to my village in northern New Mexico, San Cristobal, and one of my dogs started screaming, and so I ran over, and he was caught in a trap. And, um, oops. <laughs> um, and so, I didn't have any experience with traps, and I just tried to yank the thing open, and I got it open just enough so he could get his paw out, but then it closed on my fingers. And so I was trapped, and I just looked around, and there it was. <laughs> and I couldn't open it anymore. I didn't have the strength to open it with one of my hands already trapped. And so, um, luckily, I saw that the trap was tied around a tree, and I was able to untie it and run down to the village and get a neighbor to help me get it off. And then I realized that my other dog wasn't with me, and I knew that she also was trapped. So I got in my car, drove back up to where I'd been walking. She was indeed trapped and was bleeding profusely, and her trap was staked in the ground that was by then frozen. And so I had to dig out the stake with uh, the, a piece of my jab. Anyway, to make a long story short, it required a lot of vet bills and medical bills for myself. Um, the terror of an animal being trapped and a human being trapped, and not to mention what if a child was out walking their dog 
and the dog got trapped, and the same thing happened. Um, these traps are incredibly dangerous, incredibly harmful. They only serve the fur industry in a few New Mexican trappers who trap. There aren't many, but the fur industry, I'm sure, is the one that is keeping trapping legal in New Mexico. So I'm so grateful to Representative Bobby Gonzalez, our very own representative from Taos County, who has introduced legislation to finally join other Western states like Arizona, Colorado, and California to ban these weapons, <laughs> these instruments of torture from our public lands and hopefully also from our private lands. Thank you very much for all your support. with us this afternoon. Um, this is a picture of um, what this dog suffered. You, you see up here on the before side. And um, we have, I'm sure you all are familiar with many other animals who suffer the same kind of extreme neglect that causes them great bodily harm or even death. And we know that we can do better. Um, and here we have Taffy and Dave Card, who are our examples of why we need to do better. Please welcome Taffy. Taffy just wants to get out of here. Like you, he's had a long day. Taffy was found not by me, but by uh, another individual with a rescue group on the side of the road down in Valencia. He was emaciated, torn up on the back, under the neck. Don't know if an animal got him, a fence got him, or probably more likely the human or humans who had him easily discarded him because he's diabetic and blind. Hey, no use to us anymore. So, when I saw Taffy at a, an adopt-a-thon, and everybody would go by and look at him and go, aww, and then walk on by, uh, I'm glad they were there. Hopefully they rescued something, one of the dogs, but I couldn't resist. I was love at first sight, and it was. And uh, they said, well, do you know that he's diabetic and blind? And I said, yeah, well, your point. <laughs> so, this is the kind of Unfortunately, it happens all too often. Years ago, I worked for Animal Service Division. I was the PR guy. I did a show on KOAT twice a week. There are so many instances you don't even know about that come into the Animal Shelter Humane Society of abuse, neglect, discard of unwanted animals, and a lot of them aren't pretty. 53 comes to mind. 53 is, on average, the number of dogs that are euthanized each week. That's another issue, responsible pet ownership. But we're here today as a collective group to try to make things better in our state. They need to be. We need to get the slap on the hand misdemeanor into converted into a felony for the degree. So anyway, uh, Taffy will be doing autographs after uh, five dollars each. Uh, he's a champ. I've had dogs all my life. He's one of the best.
Thank you very, very much. Uh, I have to get down to the floor of the boat in a minute, so I just wanted to say a few words. Uh, yes, I am the sponsor of House Bill 316, as it stands now, and we rolled it over. Thank you. And we actually rolled it over to be heard on the House floor tomorrow. And give you a chance to, uh, to contact your reps later on and uh, to help me out with this. It's going to be a close vote. I, I believe we can do it. We've been working hard on it. Thank you for the animal protection of New Mexico. So folks, we'll get it done together, okay? Let me out. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming out today. It's a great answer.